in space. No one can hear you, Re. Welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Disney's upcoming Alien series. It's not going to focus on Ripley, of course. Uh, it's actually going to focus on class warfare. With xenomorphs. With xenomorphs and inequality. This is a TV show? Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, class Can't warfare. Wait. Class warfare with xenomorphs. This is after Disney uh, said they're working on a fifth Predator movie that's going to feature a, a female Comanche warrior. And it sounds an awful lot like Mulan or Pocahontas. Yeah, it really sounds like Mulan. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's talk about this and the reaction to it. It's not terribly good. The irony is that a lot of people think Ripley was like one of the best female characters, kick-ass female leads ever. No, she needs to be rewritten. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, anyway, we're going to talk about that. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 204,000 subs. <laughs> Thank you for the support. Saw this tweet earlier today, and I was like, oh, my God. And then I'm like, well, it's Disney, of course. Of course, Disney's Alien TV series is going to deal with uh, the inequality we're we're struggling with right now if it's right. not resolved. I mean, it's not uh, alien. It's My Little Pony. I mean, you can't. You're not going to allow to escape it. Your kids can't escape it. Nobody can escape it because they're going to make sure they shove it down your throat at every every chance they have. This is Hollywood. This is especially Disney. We've actually got multiple Disney videos coming today, and Disney is. I, they're not even tripling down on the diversity and inclusion initiatives. They're like quadrupling, sex tupling. Mm -hmm. oh, you're not allowed to say that. Sex tupling. It is Disney's sex tupling. Yeah, they're. I mean, they are everything. Every movie they do, everything in the theme park, every animated series, every comic book, everything Disney does at this point is, for lack of a better term, woke. I mean, yeah, I hate using is. that term, I, but it is. I don't know what else, how else to call it. And it's it's getting ridiculous. It's like, and Hollywood wonders, wonders why they're failing. They're like, why are we not doing well? I have no idea. What could possibly be the problem here? Because, you know, maybe just, you know, they could have just made a good movie that maybe had some undertones of this in it, but it wasn't the focus of the movie, but it was there. And they didn't make a big deal about it. And no one probably would have cared. Yeah. But because they went and they led with it, then you know what you're going to get. When they lead with that, you know what you're in for a bunch of shit. Because if, if they were just going to, they were worried about making a good film or having good characters, they, they would just do it. They wouldn't announce it. They wouldn't be like, give us a high five and pass in the back. But Disney keeps wanting accolades. Yeah, I mean, this is this is crazy. This is kind of like, you know, I make the analogy, we talk about the religious, the religious left and mm -hmm. how it mirrors the uh, hyper-religious right of like the, you know, 70s and 80s and uh, in before that. But it's kind of like, you know, if you lead with, hey, kids, let's hear a Bible story. People are like, oh, no, mm -hmm. we don't want a Bible story. You're going to tell me I'm an awful person. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, here, let me tell you a story about so-and-so. And then it's like, oh, hey, that was a pretty entertaining story. And also, I'm an awful person. I need to reflect. Star Trek did this. Next Generation did this actually very well. Next Generation told entertaining stories and you would watch them and you would think like, huh, maybe that alien with the funny nose represents a certain kind of people that I should be nicer to. Now we have <laughs> New Trek and, and Doctor Who and now aliens that are going to go and do the same thing, but they're going to tell you up front it's these things so that you have, and if you don't watch it, if you don't watch it, it's you're an awful person. And if you do watch it, the lesson is you're an awful person. So they wonder why people don't want to watch things like this because people are trying to escape the bullshit that is mostly Twitter and the media. And instead that all the entertainment outlets out there are just you know, barfing up the same bullshit and trying to say it's something new. Um, you know, and like we said about with the um, the new Luca film, yeah. if Disney had actually intended that to be a, a you know LGBTQ representation, mm -hmm. oh, you better believe they would have been screaming it from the rooftops. You would have heard about it, especially since it released in June. Oh yeah, They're, yeah. You know, yeah. if Disney's not leading with it, you can pretty much assume that that wasn't their intention. Even if they could get away with it, you know, because they probably weigh the pros and the cons of mm -hmm. like, should we just come right out and say this is. Uh, this movie means this or that or whatever. But then it's like, then people are going to call them out and be like, well, you weren't this, that or whatever enough, enough yes. Disney. You know, I mean, look at what happened with uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda. He puts out In the Heights, mm -hmm. uh, all Latino cast. 
they're not Latino enough. They're not dark skinned enough. They're not. Mm-hmm. It's not representative enough. But you're never gonna. There's always gonna be somebody who's gonna be pissed about it. Yeah. Because it's not them. Basically, if it's not me and my representation, it doesn't count. And that's the problem that you have when you start, you know, changing stories to be about representation over a good story and a good character who happens to be, you know, whatever. And and that's what we're going with aliens. Right from the get-go, you're being told. You're being told. They're not even hiding it. They're not even like, yeah, this is going to be an interesting story. Maybe we're going to talk about, you know, uh, corporate... Uh, you know, kind of look at our situation right now with corporations and stuff like that. And, you know, it's, it's going to be a good story. Trust me. It's, it's a good story. Just, just hang tight. It's going to be good. It might be different. We're not going to have Ripley in it because we don't need Ripley in every alien movie, but uh, it's going to be a good story. Instead, they're like, no, we're going to address inequality that we're struggling with current year. That's what this movie's mm-hmm. about everybody. Cause I'm a good person. Watch my movie. Watch wouldn't my get alien picked movie. up. We wouldn't pick up the script unless it was. How is this better than Covenant? How is this better than Prometheus? People were mad because Prometheus took Alien in a totally different direction and it did kind of tap into the whole ancient astronaut theorist thing and they retconned the origin of the aliens and all that. And they're like, well, well, Disney's back now. They're going to course correct Alien. Uh, we're not even going to mention uh, Prometheus and Covenant. We're just going to move forward with a whole new Alien. Get back to basics. I just can't get past the fact you're putting Alien and Disney in the same sentence. That blows my mind. Like, Predator and Disney, Alien and Disney. And that, to me, is more of a distraction than anything. Why couldn't we keep the great movie ride open again? Because Disney owns, like, almost all of those movies now. Yes, and by the way, the great movie ride is a far superior attraction than Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. You may like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and you're allowed to, but I think most people agree the great movie ride was a better, um, more interesting attraction. Well, here, you know, Stephen the Artist says this is what happens when you can't separate activism from escapism. Exactly. Uh, You're not allowed to. Yeah, I'm here to see Zenos kill people and the hero win, not to be preached at about inequality. Movies like this are a way to escape real life for a bit now. The space is being invaded. It's been. Like I said, in space, you know, everyone will hear you re. I guess I should have said it that way. In space, everyone can hear you re. Yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing. Look, they said that they're just, just making... Aliens political. Now. No, th- th- there's a difference. I hate this argument. There is a difference. I referenced Star Trek The Next Generation before. They never led with, uh, this This shows edutainment. It's, we're going to preach it. Oh, yeah. They always do this. They always are like, well, he always was. Yeah, a lot of things were. But they did it in such a way that was, well, I would think, more um, intelligent, uh, more nuanced, you know, more creative, where they 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 did it and they, they sent the message, people got the message without being like right in your face with the message. Anymore, it just seems like, you know, idiotic, caveman ass, ooh, hit you with message, ooh, hit you with message. And it's, it's, I actually, I would say it's dumber in a way. They, they, they dumb down everything. When everything's a bastardized version of Davy and Goliath, nothing is, you know, because it's like, that's what this is. It's all edutainment. All, mm-hmm. Everything. Everything is being put out by Hollywood now because they lead with it. They're like, well, we need to we make, we make need to make sure that we uh, uh, train the masses right. And so we'll do that through entertainment. So we'll make sure that, you know, we make good people because we know that they like Star Wars and they like Alien and they like all these. You know, they're going to come see these movies because the brand's got. And then we're going to make sure that we preach to them, too. So, so can, are the Xenomorphs going to make sure they only kill certain people? And percentages, because otherwise it's not equal, and that's inequality. I had heard a rumor, and I hope to God it's not true, but I had heard a rumor that that uh, there was going to be someone with like a pet xenomorph in this movie, like they're going to have a good xenomorph. I'm like, Are you no, serious? is that like the good head crab? Like, or like the, 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 the game. Good head. no, it like, was it yeah. Half-Life? They yeah. had like one that was like the one's pet or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Is that kind of like that? I don't know. Like, this is the good, this is the good one. So this, this good one's going to, going to kill it like, like Gizmo. Well, then they're trying to kill it too. It's going to be like, you know, blue in uh Jurassic Park. Was it blue? Yeah. It was yeah. Blue. yeah. You know, blue it's like, come on. Um, I hope. like, no one's done that yet. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, um, here's the interview. Uh, Noah Hawley explains what you need to know about the upcoming show. Uh, well, you've told us everything we need to know. We, 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 know, we know enough. We know enough. And this is a guy who did who did Fargo, right? Um, it's not a Ripley story. She's one of the great characters of all time. And I think the story has been told pretty perfectly and I don't want to mess with it. It's a story that's set on Earth. Oh, because che- it's cheaper. Cheaper. <laughs> it's cheaper. Oh, my God. You this know, is like the Masters of the Universe movie. 
It's cheaper. Yes, it is. Oh my God, are the xenomorphs going to eat a bucket of fried chicken? God, this is they need to get Courtney Cox. Courtney Cox needs to. to, to no, this is what this is what's going on with Avatar too. Supposedly, now I don't know for a hundred percent. They didn't say for sure, sure but it does but, sound like why would it? Why would be? Why would they be culturally? Uh, you know, people that are on Earth or yeah, in our world. Yeah, it sounds like it's. It sounds like they're going to set the uh, the live action mm. Avatar current year uh, on on Earth or an Earth like world instead of you know actually ramping up the budget to make it look like the animated version. Um, it's much cheaper to set on Earth than it is to go build a bunch of science fiction sets, isn't God. it? God. Uh, the alien stories are all, they're always trapped, trapped in a prison, trapped in a spaceship. Well, that's true. That'd be interesting to open it up a little bit. So what happens if you... It's not about opening up a little bit. It's about, it's about closing off the budget. Yeah. Um, we'll yeah. spin it that way. Oh my God, it's the real world. Our world has fractured and those characters exist. I can tell you that they're not real, but the whole point is there are Americans who believe that angels are walking among us. You know, there's been a huge resurgence in the UFO conversation. Oh my God, here we go. In 2020, there was a sense that the shift had gone the other way. Now all the people who were living in Trump's America realized they were actually now living in a different America. Well, why doesn't the media know this? Because they keep going back to it. But that's not even what, they're up above is where he was talking about the movie here, going up. He went up. He's talking here. He said, um, you know, about the about the in some level story of inequality, they go here, mind, you're also gonna see people who are sending them. You'll see what happens when the inequal inequality we're struggling with now isn't resolved. If we as a society can't figure out how to prop each other up and spread the wealth, it's a com it's a it's a it's a, com a, a, a socialism communism movie. Social it, that's what it's they're gonna socialism. Call it. it is socialism. If we give your house prop each other up and spread the wealth, that's what's gonna happen to us. Because so basically they're gonna have rich people and the poor people and the it, it, it's about socialism. Oh my god, they need to call this alien eat the rich. Oh my god. <laughs> I missed oh yes. Yes. That's what they need to call this movie. It's a show, isn't it? I just can't I can't I I, well, to be oh, fair, oh, it's a series. That's right. To be fair, oh my God. there's a I lot of rich people to eat. I wouldn't watch this anyway because I don't like I don't like this kind of movies like Alien. So I'm not gonna watch this. But as somebody that's watching this Hollywood in general, I'm just like, and you know what I love? Hollywood keeps pushing this, you know, communism, socialism bullshit. Um, do you see those the celebrities lining up to give you their money? Do you no. see Disney and all their executives, you know, lining up to give you their money? They don't even line up to give their own employees money. They take out 10, 15 million dollar bonuses, which would pay people for no. several weeks. What they're going to do is they're counting on you guys fighting each other and all watching the show to be like, see, see, it's all we have to have socialism. And, it, you know, if it ever happened, they would somehow be, you know, exempt from having to, to share the wealth. That's what's going to happen. The rich don't lose. I'm sorry. Disney doesn't usually lose because they have so much damn money and lawyers. They don't. So why? I mean, they don't really actually give a shit about you. They want to give the illusion of giving a shit so that you watch their stuff. I'm like, or shit. I should do you shit there again. I'm just like, that's what this is about. They're tricking you with, with oh, oh, you know, this is what would happen if we don't have socialism. We need to push socialism. To, oh, and who, who does Disney answer to anymore? China. Yeah. Who are they? Whose ass are they kissing? China. They had two good alien movies, and they had Prometheus was okay. I didn't watch them. I don't um, watch those. So, and so, so of all the alien I mean, movies, yeah. all the alien media, they really the percentage wise, there has been very little that I would consider classic. The first two alien movies and uh, Prometheus was okay. I think it gets a bad rep. It was okay, but the rest of it. Not so much. And this is probably going to give it all run for its money in terms of badness. It's, it's, it's stupid. Um, hey, I, that's not true. I did watch it part of Aliens once when I was little, when I was a kid. I was at my friend's house and, and they, her family like was into that kind of stuff. So they, we watched it. And then I was so afraid to go to bed because afraid if I didn't sleep on my stomach, an alien was going to pop out of my stomach. So I laid on my stomach and slept on my stomach for years. Because in my mind, my kid mind, that was how I was going to stop it. Not that it couldn't go out my back or out my mouth or someplace like that. No, no. In my child mind, I was safe that way. True story. If it helps you sleep at night. There you go. You know, uh, so. I, you know it's funny because to me, I watched so many slasher movies when I was a kid that Aliens was like the least, the least scary thing I had seen. But I'll tell you the one movie that freaks me out more than the one 80s movie that to this day, still freaks me out is the fly 
I don't want to talk just about it. Just the body I horror. I have not seen it, and I don't want to... That, I, I've heard enough. I can't do body horror. I can do people getting their heads chopped off and blood and blah, blah, blah. But I can't... Body horror, I have a hard time with. Anyway, we're going to wrap this up. Yep. I don't think we're going to see much body horror in this movie. Oh, there's going to be some horror. It's just going to be a different kind of... It's going to be a bloody disaster is what it's going to yep. be. Uh, we're we're going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.